F-strings are really, really powerful if you know how to use them. Luckily for you, in today's video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to start using them. All right, so let's say you've got a variable name with a string Fabio, and you want to use that in another string, okay? So to create an F-string, you just need to put the F, then the quotes, okay? And then inside, you can write whatever you want. You can use expressions inside of F-strings, and you need to put them inside curly brackets, okay? So here you can use an expression like four plus three, whatever you want, and you can even use your variable directly in here. Of course, you can even call methods on that, so like lower, okay? So if you print that, you see that, let's actually do this, you can see that you've got Fabio lowercase, really, really cool, okay? Of course, you can even call functions inside of the expression. So let's say you've got a function, some numbers and one and two, which returns and one plus and two. And then you want to print an F string like total, some numbers, and then five, seven, okay? As you can see, total 12, okay? So you can even call functions inside the F string directly, okay? Of course, you need to be careful with the single and double quotes because if you need to use a certain type inside, use the other one to create the F string, okay? So for example, you need to be careful with dictionary keys. Let's say that you've got a dictionary, my dictionary, and you've got key five, and then you want to print that. So F string, then you want to do something like value, the expression, and here you want to access the key. Okay, you need to use double quotes because to create the F string, you, you've used the single quote. Okay, you can do something like that. But you may wonder why can't we just escape them to so do something like this? Okay, this. You cannot do that because here you are inside the expression and you cannot escape any character inside the expression. Okay, you can just escape them outside. Here, for example, if you wanted uh, to escape the single quote with a backslash, you could do something like this and then that would be escaped and that will, would work. Instead of here, you need to use, okay, perfect. So let's actually comment this out. I'm just going to keep the name, okay? And I'm gonna show you how you can use even little conditions inside your F-string expressions. So let's say you've got 820 and then a message like F, welcome, then the name, and then here another expression, double quotes, okay? You can drink alcohol if age greater than 18 else you cannot drink alcohol okay this is printed if the age is greater than 18 and this is printed otherwise okay so let's actually try that let's print the message as you can see you can drink alcohol but if here we had 15 you cannot drink alcohol Okay, really, really cool. Of course, this line of code is a little bit too long, so you can split it. So you can do something like put the quote here, then F string, down line, then backslash here, okay? And this would work. And you can even do something like this with the backslash here to put things like that, okay? And this would still print the same thing, as you can see. Of course, if you use triple quotes, things would be printed as they are written, okay? So let's actually get all of these message one. And let's say we've got triple quotes here, triple quotes here, there's that, there's that, okay? As you can see, let's say you've got all spaces here. If you were to print that, print message one, okay? you'll see that you've got the line here, the spaces here, so things are printed as they're written. So keep that in mind, okay? So let's comment this out as well, okay? So an important thing to know is that you can use raw strings in combination with F strings, especially to avoid weird errors, you know, when handling Windows paths. So let's say you've got name file is equal to photo.jpg, then you've got the path to file, and then raw string, F string, okay? RF, and then I'm going to copy the path like that. Okay, so here you've got your expression, and here, as you can see, everything works. The only weird thing is that Visual Studio Code gives you this error, but everything is fine. In fact, if you print the path to file, everything works. 
as you can see, everything works as expected. So, you know, just ignore this. Okay. Then let's go to dates, to dates formatting. So first of all, I'm going to import the date time. Then I'm going to create a simple date, date time dot date time, just random date. Um, let's do something like three day, third, like that. Then if I want to print the date, I can do something like my date, then column, and then I'm going to use date time format codes that you can find in the docs. Okay. So the day, then the month and the, yeah. And as you can see, we've got our date like that. Okay. So now let's quickly touch on number formatting, which is kind of important. So like percentages, decimals, binaries, etc. So let's say that you had a number, an integer, something like that, and you want to print the binary of that number. So you could do something like number B, column B, which is the binary, and then X for the hexadecimal, for example, and you'll see the two values, really, really cool. And also if you have a float, like something like, something like that, you can print it and you can even decide the number of decimals after the, after the point. So let's say you want a string, then number, colon, point two, two decimals, F, which is the type like a float. Okay. And this also rounds the decimal part. Okay. So in this case, you will have 35, but if you had like four here, you would have 34, as you can see, it rounds up the, the decimal part. Okay. Of course, with the F strings, you can even print the percent that a number is of another number. Okay. So let's say you've got a number value like that. And then the total is something like that. And you want to find percent that this number is of this number. Okay. So you can do something like print F percentage. You can do some math here. So value divided by the total colon 0.2 to decimals percentage. Okay. So this is going to give you the percentage like that. Really cool. Okay. And of course, if you had a long number, something like this, for example, you can use number separator to make it easier to read. Of course, as we did above, you can concatenate different options like number of decimals, double number, etc. So F number, then separator, which is the comma, two decimals, F float. If we were to print that, you see your number with the separators and also the two decimals. All right, now you should see another video about Python on the screen. So what are you waiting for? Click on it and learn something new.